again, we talked about it yesterday. I feel like hopping on the message. Uh, you understand at least the language of the statement by Hoang Po of whatever can be perceived cannot be that which is perceiving or, or anything that you can be aware of is not the awareness. Yes. It really helps a lot because the way uh, negation can work is really uh, the revelation of the failedness of the systems that we have been relying on or there's been a resting in it. There's no person relying on it, but there's been a reliance on it. When there's a recognition that it's failed, and because uh, usually what happens, if you've ever noticed when you were in like spiritual spiritual practice, the practice was very rarely investigated. It was you usually, and, you know, and you weren't investigated. You were reprimanded for not doing enough or you need this practice longer. You've got to get better candles or, you know bigger gong or whatever it was always uh turning upon us as the reason why it wasn't working but then there's a point where you finally get it that it's not working yeah it's beautiful really and it's not working because of you it's just not working truly it's not working because of what you really are but we won't go there so there's not working and then that negation sets off a, a domino effect. And what I found is all of this pent up pressure in these drives to seek, even the subtle drive of seeking through not seeking, uh, gets relieved. And then there's a, an exhale that when the next inhale comes in, you know, the next activity, it's much more chilled out, put it that way. And that for me is the traveling lighter. That's an aspect of what it feels like. You've, you've come to a point of realizing uh, you've been freed from the need to be liberated. That's incredible, really. You've also been freed from the need to get into the moment because you can't be out of a moment. And you're freed from a lot of corrections that need to be made because nothing ever really happened yeah it's sort of like does the sky uh ever get lost in the cloud yes hmm. so why things seem to not work is because we there's a belief that things don't work if you see you're not that which has that belief things don't work, you'll see everything works, yeah? It may not be what you call working, but everything works. And uh, it just kicks into a more of a panoramic view where you can see uh, things in an inclusive manner instead of an exclusive manner. And this just comes, like with no thought or effort on your part, like it says in recovery, you will be placed in a position of neutrality through no thought or effort on your part. Yeah. It will be, a, it, it's, it's like a, the problem will not exist for you anymore. And to me, how non-duality and recovery really meet is with the understanding of non-duality, you realize the problem does not exist as you anymore, which really is something. Because a lot of people during a day, the problem may not exist for them, but as the source of the problem, it's going to. Yeah. But when it doesn't exist as you, that's a real, real relief. Real relief. Yeah. And um, like the dominoes don't have to be lined up to be knocked over yeah they can go into a circle go around go there 
it's a certain momentum. You don't have to have everything like this to have it all fall. You start, the dominoes go like this, they all fall, yeah? It just shows you how your our perceptual apparatus and the programming that we look as, instead of seeing that you're looking through, uh, is, <laughs> it's got a lot of built-in myopic blind spots and uh <laughs> uh, 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 the great wish for everything to stabilize is almost like uh you know blaming the cups and the and the and the plates and the dishes for moving instead of realizing the table is off yeah so every time you put something down on it, it looks like the thing is moving, but the thing is only moving because of the offness of the table. So this is like where this message hits. It hits at the basis of how we or how we or where we or live from. It just changes that. Instead of being based on a you, We're, we're, it, we're based on, and we've always been based on something, let's say, before that you. And now, instead of you trying to figure everything out, uh, there's a figuring out of the you. Yeah. And that figuring out is it's not you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, see how it goes. Yeah. If you're at the beach, you're completely at the beach. If you're in front of this thing, you're completely in front of this laptop. Uh, you're finally located in the place and the time you seem to be appearing as an in. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad because uh, thinking, trying to make everything stop shaking while you're shaking or agitated, it doesn't work. Yeah. The agitating, the, the agitation of the head is lending itself to thinking everything else is agitated. You try to calm everything down and it doesn't work. It's like herding cats. But what happens when you see that and as not you, then there's that basis of calm, which can, like a sky, can contain a huge storm. Yes. But the storm doesn't nullify or negate the sky. Yeah. Hmm. It's the belief in its power to do that gets negated, really. So there's sky and there's something appearing in the sky. That's what's appearing in the sky is not going to override the sky. Can you imagine if you had that basis in place? throughout the day with no thought and effort on your part. Just the way you see things. Yeah. Not the emphasis of you, the way things are seen, let's say. Really, the way things are seen instead of the way you see things because that's, probably, that's sort of the dilemma is the way you see things. Uh, but let's say the way things are seen. Yeah. And then things that you would have thought had the quality of being a, a bona fide certified obstacle to you arriving at where you want to be, will see, will will take the quality of a cloud that forms and unforms. Yeah. It may appear like it looks like a dog or something, but if you just sit there and look at it, you'll see right through it. Yeah. And there's a breaking point. Enough is revealed that something snaps. Yeah. I don't know what it will take, but 
like it says, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, yeah? Something shifts some interest and attention that no matter how you try to get interest and attention and, and, and to attend to things, it always went back to that one interest and attention to you as, as the thing. When that, that gets changed and it shifts, and now there's a loss of interest sufficiently to change the center of what we call self-centeredness, yeah? Yeah. It's almost like a top spinning, and that spinning has made a groove. So every time you spin the top, it falls into that groove. Now it's that thing has been smoothed over and it's moving, yes? It's spinning where it will, and it goes on and on. Yeah. I feel satsang is sufficient. Yeah. I guess it's up to you to find out if that's true or not for you. In my case, it's sufficient. It's a joyous reminder of, of how it is. Simple. Come, share the space. Sit with some certainty. And something exudes and affects the people are, that are in the space. Yeah. And when they, these things start to occur, you have a modicum of understanding to recognize the head is going to arise right after anything is available or you seem to be somewhere. It's going to make a statement. It's that which I am that's somewhere. Me, Paul, the sheep programming. Just know that and know there's no volition involved in it, that you there's not an underlying aspect that's really you doing it. There isn't. It's mechanical. Yeah. At most we're paying attention to it. At least we lose interest in it, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So the claiming continues. The action figure doesn't get it. Don't you? You've realized that by now, right? How many times have you sat in a satsang and got it? Like it resonated. And then a week or two, three weeks later, you signed up for a retreat with another person person yeah going doing this doing that doing this doing that <laughs> the head collects getting it yeah it's a building block to making you something else it collects it it collects epiphanies it collects peak experiences it believes that it's building something. The more peak experience, the bigger it's going to be. Or the more epiphanies, the longer, the more adhesiveness it's going to hold. But does it? No. Because the claiming of the epiphany doesn't reinforce or emphasize the epiphanies aspect. It reinforces the one who had the epiphany. The peak experiences collected have now been neutered, and they're just pointers to the one who had the peak experiences. Yeah. A Zen bit slap isn't like the clap, the slap that you hear that you hear around the world, you know? It can just be a very subtle little whack, and there's a movement of that little that tops groove coming out of the groove. Yeah. And then after a while, a new groove is set. And now your axis with uh, that, your whole world is spinning around is solid. Yeah. It's neither subject nor object. Things have been negated sufficiently and now you're spinning and maybe you'll hear it as sounds in, in your head and shit, the celestial spheres or you'll feel a hum going on, or these things, 
and you're just sort of there's an like an alignment. It's not your elbows and shoulders are aligned and straight and like that. I'm talking about an alignment, not with you know right angles of muscles and shit, but an alignment. And then you're there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's here. Yeah. So anyone want to share any questions today, tonight? Anybody want to raise their hand? Oh, we got one. Craig May. Hi, Craig. We got one. Sounds like we're at the, the fishing hole. All right, Craig. We pulled it out. <laughs> Go. I just, I just wanted to share with you. Um, yesterday, in fact, um, I shared briefly before about this uh, legal tussle we're, we're in. Essentially, we're in a, a, a one apartment of six, and we're, we're in the process of suing the owner's corporation. It's a really nasty situation. Anyway, yesterday, I uh, come to a particular juncture. Now, um, the head was fearful of a certain scenario playing out. That scenario played out. It was unbelievable. Um, so when it happened, and Rowena told me about it, it was very confronting. It was a terribly uncomfortable feeling, and it was it was extremely. Uh, I was in the hallway, a shit and fan. So we we talked through it. What we what you know the situation we're in, what we're going to do going forward, because it's important. She's the one at the cold face. She's dealing with it face to face. So you know I, I need to support her as much as I, as much as I can. So we talked through it, and once that was done, everything went quiet. Everything went quiet. I was at utter peace. Beautiful. This is in the hallway of shit and fan. I had such a peaceful afternoon. It was unbelievable. I went for a walk. It was just gorgeous. I was utterly at peace in this situation and I had no interest, no interest in what the head had to say about it. And because I had no interest in that, the head had nothing to feed off. It couldn't build it into this fucking grand catastrophe, which it desperately wanted to do, desperately wanted to do. So that that groove that you're talking about, Paul, you know, that we're so, that we we make that groove when we're referring to the head, constantly referring to the head. When that when that's abandoned, you don't think about it. You just don't go there. You're just not interested in what it's got to say. So I went very quickly from this situation where it was worst case scenario, worst case scenario. A couple of hours later, I felt like it was a gift. I felt like it was a gift because I felt so at peace um, when what the head was fearing just had just taken place. Um, it was lovely. I cannot tell you. If you can be at peace in those situations, you can be at peace anywhere at any time. The situations and circumstances, the action figure are irrelevant when it comes to this. It really is. It's like, um, you know, when that happens and you refer to the head, it's like offering your neck to a vampire. The head's just going to go fucking whoosh and suck. <laughs> suck the fucking life out of you. You know, to build, to build this fucking catastrophe that's going to happen. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, I was so at peace that I could hear it right down the well saying, what about tomorrow? What about next week? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like fucking hell. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, so um, I thought it was just a nice example that 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 tendency to refer to the head gets shut down. It just shuts down. You don't go there. You just just uh, instinctively, you don't make a decision not to go there. If you make that decision, you'll be there. 
It's just natural. It shuts down. You're not interested in what the head's got to say. And yeah. you're at peace. You're at peace. Beautiful. So gorgeous. Now, we've got a situation on our hands, a serious situation. We'll deal with it. We'll do what we have to do. But in the meantime, I'm sitting here with, with my friends. When I go out for a walk this afternoon, it'll just be the birds and whatever. So you're here. Like, like you said just before, Paul, you're here. And your attention and interest in, is on what's here whether it's a bird singing in a tree, whether it's the person you're having a conversation with, whatever it is, whether it's the, the beautiful sound of the wind whistling past your ear, that's, that's what your uh, attention and interest is on. It's here because it's not um, diverted elsewhere. It just doesn't go there. Beautiful. It's so revealing because it's not the head that's the problem. It's, it's the attention and interest that goes on what's the, what the head's doing. It's our juice. It's our juice and our power source that we give to the head and then it moulds molds and shapes, shapes it into a stick that it can fucking whack us over the head with. If it doesn't get that fuel, if it doesn't get our interest and attention, it, it, can't, it can't go there. It'll try, but it hasn't got the it hasn't got the oomph, it hasn't got the power to do it. It's been denied its power source. The plug's been pulled out of its wall. And it's just left there sort of <laughs> murmuring away, you know. But it has no so like whatever. Yes. Yeah. That's the point, bro. So if your interest and attention was in the same groove, you'd be trying to be mindful. You'd be trying to do this or that. You would rationalize with spiritual stories. Well, this doesn't matter when you felt like shit or whatever, or super afraid. But when the interest tension has moved, there's no mop up operation. There's no, uh, a triage there's none like that yes the whole the whole five uh act play goes to a very short little infomercial that you've bought the product before and you know it sucks basically yeah so it may be really serious and going all at it for four minutes you you weather the storm and you realize who wants an adult onesie you know what I mean? Who wants to look like Barney the dinosaur? Even though there's a flap on the back and I could go to the bathroom if I was at like a soccer match. That's not really <laughs> not that interested in it. Yeah. <laughs> there's just too much of there's too much of the onesie I can't get over. So now you're sort of it's a, it's like being in I'm telling you, like in that time in Turkey in that rug emporium. Then there's a knowing that is us, really. Yeah, we don't have that knowing. It is us. And therefore, wherever we think we are, it's available. It's the underlying knowledge that doesn't... The knowledge that's important to the underlying knowledge is an invitation to that knowledge. It's not knowledge about that knowledge. It's an invitation, Yeah to say, hey, there may be an unsuspected resource. And then whammo, yeah, why? It's like, and then of course it says, where has it been all this time? And you realize it's always been here. And then that knowing is as if, uh, like riding a bike doesn't get close to it. But you know, a lot of people, once you learn how to ride a bike, you know how to ride a bike, yes? So in this case, there's, a bike we've ridden way before any knowledge, yeah? Yeah? And when we get introduced to it, there's a recognition, and then there's a knowing. I remember I was at a satsang with someone in the beginning of listening to the message, and I, I heard I was listening to that person, but I wasn't listening to the person. I was listening to the place, you know? I was listening really to the listening, really. And then there was a hit of like, an unspoken yes, that this is a knowledge before all the knowledge. Yeah. 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 And uh, 
And then when I met Ramesh Balsakar and he did this little uh, example with me talking about, uh, you know, asked me if I had a place to live and where I was from. And I said, yes. And then he said, and I paraphrase it now, but basically it was, there's a feeling that you're like an impersonal presence. The presence is there. I mean, personal, but you think it's you. So, so you would call it personal presence. So presence claimed is like personal presence. And now the sense of presence is triggering the head to, to point immediately to this idea of being Paul. <laughs> you know what I mean? Present Paul, Paul's present. So it's presence and then it's Paul present. <laughs> yeah, it's trippy. And so he would say there's a knowledge, there's a knowledge there of the impersonal presence. Yeah. So because the impersonal presence is that's the presence. Paul is like a little bubble bouncing in and out of that impersonal. So when Paul goes to work, does Paul, if he stays at work for a long time, forget he has a house? No, Paul doesn't. Does Paul, if he has to go to Europe to work, does he forget he has a house? Because I hadn't forgotten I had a house in America and I was in India when I was listening to Ramesh that day. Yes. The, and I was pretty far away, but space and distance and time weren't sufficient to cause a forgetting that I have a house. Yes. Which is like the perfect example of that knowing. Yeah. So there's a knowing of what we are, right where we are. Yeah. Now the head likes to neuter it by claiming everything else to keep everything else and really like guild knowledge out here to try to keep us in a way from recognizing that inherent knowledge of I am. Yeah. What, but one, you know, uh, when the cat's out of the bag, it's out of the bag. Yeah. And then satsang will only fortify that. And then that which would have looked like a Herculean task to overcome something and finally vanquish it will be very disarming. And it will be like the most ordinary thing to be awake constantly during the day. <laughs> because that's what you have always been awake constantly during the day and night. <laughs> so that's the funny thing. It's, you know, you plan for maybe a parade, but when you arrive on having never left, there's no, obviously, no point for a parade. <laughs> the parade is... <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I get you, Craig, yes. I've I've had act, car accidents where there was such a sublime peace as the car was rotating, hydroplaning, yeah, and time really slowed down where I was just twiddling my thumbs until I hit the guardrail to see how bad it was. But it was unbelievable. There was a suspension of all this agitation and stuff, and I was just seemingly super slowly going like this in this car. <laughs> oh, it's just beautiful. And I've had a number of those where some of the most quietest moments were right before the storm. Yes. I just got ran over by the car or I hurt, hit my head in the water. And uh, when I hit my head in the water at this beach, it knocked my brain for a loop and I lost, I couldn't move my, my uh, legs or arms. Yeah. And there was no thoughts. And I was like a cucumber, basically. I couldn't <laughs> move, but luckily I landed on my back so I didn't drown. And I couldn't yell for help because I had no voice, but I was completely super on. Yeah. And it took about four or five minutes, maybe longer of time for the head to regroup from the whack. And it found me laying on a surfboard and they were cutting the surf, the, the uh, wetsuit off me, which they always do. And the first thing my head could say, like parachuting into this new moment, laying on the beaches, 
I can't afford the ambulance. <laughs> Basically, let me die on the beach. I can't afford going to the hospital. I couldn't believe it. I had four minutes free, and suddenly its first presentation showed its complete myopic, fear-driven angst. It was beautiful. Yeah, You could never... Uh, no matter how many different clothes the emperor wears, you'd always see it from then on. The emperor has no clothes. It was so fucking obvious. <laughs> it revealed so much. It was mind boggling. I was stunned laying in the in the ambulance going to the hospital. I was stunned out of selfing, so to speak. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah. See, if you believe you have to remember something, you're going to have a lot of experiences of forgetting it. But this knowledge isn't about remembering because it's unforgettable. The knowledge that permeates the, the space of I am is unforgettable. Nothing could appear real in that close proximity of existence. Yes. No appearance could appear to be real in that close proximity. There's a knowledge of that in all of us. That's what gets triggered in satsang, when you have an aha or you resonate with the message. Because you've danced to that message. Your vibration has danced as that message. Yeah? Yeah. And do you, do you start sweating and flexing your muscles because of all the thought and effort you put into arriving at that space? Or is it complete disarmament? No thought or effort could bring about this possibility because it's not a possibility, it's a fact, yeah? You knowing it or not, it's always so. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Eh? In a place where most assurances need to be reinforced, this assurance reinforce, reinforces itself. Yeah? Yeah. Take a little bit of satsang here or there. How much? Yeah. Are you going to go to a 12-hour seminar on satsang? No. You drop in. Don't even put on a pair of pants. You don't have to drive anywhere. Listen, you feel different, don't you? You feel better. Things that that sharp edge of your day gets blunted. It's nice. Yes. You're traveling lighter. You're not taking self so seriously. All these effects you would have loved to be able to produce as a self, but you can't. Yeah. It's recognizing the opposite, not the self recognizing the truth, but recognizing the truth of the self. Yes. That there is none. That's what happens. It's that which is absent is never going to be present. It only appears in time. Yeah. In those timeless moments that we have every once in a while in our life, it's nowhere to be found. It only appears in time. Yeah. It rides that wave. Yeah. So, yeah, it amazed me. Uh, there was a lot of moments when I was in that hospital uh, where I had been convinced of the severity of my situation and acceptance came over me and, and peace, yeah? That I actually, you know, a lot of people have sometimes they're in a certain situation and they feel powerless. I was in that for like months, 10 months of powerless pretty much. I mean, either I have a very thick head and I had to be really fucking pounded away at, which I would imagine is the case. But there was points where there was a surrender and there was just an acceptance that I was fucked. Yeah, basically. And even that condition of being fucked and all the meaning the head gives it 
did could not override the peace that was available. Yeah. In that lonely little hospital bed or wherever it were, occurred. Yeah. These messages can be forgotten, but what they're about is the unforgettable. Yeah. Yeah. You've rubbed the shoulders with it. Yeah. Yeah. The time now isn't affirming it. It's just negating that which is wanting to affirm it, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. In the beginning, affirmation may help, but as you go along, negation is the way. Yeah. You know, you've gotten enough cheerleading. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, go, go. You know, like just do it in a Nike ad. Many of us, hundreds of years of that. Now it's time to just, you know, be disarmed, <laughs> lay down the guns and uh, admit defeat. You're not admitting your defeat. You're admitting its defeat, just to be clear. Yeah? You're not admitting your defeat. You're admitting its defeat. Because it won't. It won't admit its defeat. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, all right, thanks. I think I see Mike's virtual hand right above. It's doing something with the Shiva. No, no, no. It's, it's a, no, that isn't. That's over there with Steve. All right, Mike. Um, I had a I had a whack yesterday that this is sort of me reporting back to the mothership. Um, I mean, can you get the? Light but something off? happened. I've been I'm in Texas right now. I've drove for two days to get here from from ha my house down in Mexico because I got to sell my truck. Long story, but I was driving yesterday and I was listening to a book on Audible. Uh, a guy um, named David Kars, who had who woke up and without any context had never had any anything, any study, any, any anything. So he's describing what happened, to him. and it took him, I think, like six or seven years afterwards to kind of piece together what really happened. And part of it was going to see Ramesh uh, mm. for several times, and uh, although he hated travel, he hates India. You know, he just had to go see this guy. But anyway, he quoted. And I don't remember if it was uh, Ramana Maharishi or uh, Isar Gadada, but we, he quoted one of them talking about, in, I'm listening to this when I'm driving, about the Hindus, and I, I know this to be true, they believe that the of the three states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, deep sleep is the most profound, and is the most, you're the most, uh, it's the most advanced, if you want to call it that. And his quote, and I don't remember who it was, but the quote was, anything that's not available to you in deep sleep is an illusion. And you, you just said, you're, gonna, you're being awake all day and all night. You know, this is this is the thing that doesn't go away because it literally never goes away. It's during the day, it's during the night, it's always there. This is awareness, right? We are changing colors as we go. This is not like this. Yeah, um, we're getting anyway, in. the lighting <laughs> light producer is the lighting director is on the case. Yeah, I, see that, I yeah. noticed that I was I was gone <laughs> into the void. I did that the other night. You were you were yelling at me about being <laughs> yeah. I had to turn it I was sitting in there in the <laughs> dark and I didn't know. <laughs> anyway, so he says he quotes them, quotes whoever it was saying this, and I had the biggest most. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, this everything everything you see is an illusion, blah 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 blah. blah. But another, a totally other thing to say that the thing that's well, the only thing that's true is what it shows up in deep sleep. It's still there in deep sleep because it never goes away. It's always there. And I don't know if that's metaphor. I don't know if that's his physical experience. I don't know if that's your physical experience. I don't, you know, I don't know. But the idea, I mean, it's the for the first time I understood. I think on some level, not even my mind is sunk in that I'm dealing with, uh, nothing I'm dealing with on a daily basis is of any use or interest on its set, in its own right at all, you know? And it's so peaceful. I turned off the book, I just drove the rest of the day and today, 
about thinking, you know, not thinking about it, but just sort of, you know, ba basking in that truth that, um, which sounds completely counterintuitive. If your mind is thinking about that, how can you have anything available in deep sleep, you know? But, and so I, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up, say that, and, you know, you tell me what you think. No, I'm not going <laughs> to tell you what I think. <laughs> okay. Don't tell me You're what feeling you think. <laughs> it. That's the point. Yeah. 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 This isn't like, uh, chanting the same statement that someone had in 11 12 yeah it's you're writing your own little book so to speak yeah something moved very you powerful. in very a powerful. sufficient a fish, sufficient manner hallelujah that's the point yeah 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 because what's revealed is already known you're the knowing of it all and this is fun in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, all this happens and then you seem to have a choice between a bologna sandwich or a peanut butter jelly sandwich. And you think there's a sufficient enough meaning to have the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There you go. Yeah. So there's all this and then there's all the activity in it. It's yeah. 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 You know how many times I throw the ball to this dog we have? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> this dog. This dog. I'm sleeping and I hear something drop that I've heard drop many times, which is a ball outside the bedroom door. So it's first starting to signal me. It's agenda for me. Yeah. It's great. You just hear a blink. And then you open the door. There she is in all her black little things staring at you. And basically, she gives me a little time. If it's too much for her, another ball gets dropped. Bop. <laughs> and this is how it goes. Yeah. Now. <laughs> I have never seen something more sure than this dog. This dog is so sure joy is ahead. If some human surrenders its arm to throw this freaking ball, yeah, it's this, you cannot break that knowledge. No fucking way. It's a knowledge before knowing shit. It just knows it wants to run after that ball, <laughs> no matter where or how just that's what it wants you can try give it a treat sometimes it'll drop the ball but the treat is eaten quickly and it picks the ball back up the ball is it's that's the point and this is this message the i am becomes like that ball yeah there's treats things happen you get interested in yes but when everything comes and goes which they do there's the ball yeah <laughs> and it's as sure as this dog is yeah yeah this dog is fucking purposeful very very sharp and i'm sure most dogs are they know what they want they're not having questions it's very deep knowledge and they just they're at a powerless position they need someone to throw the ball but they have these machines now that they can turn on themselves so we're just like, we're afraid the AI is going to get rid of us. The dogs are going to get machines and get rid of us. Just fucking sitting there. <laughs> Someone's got to have to pay the electric bill, but that's about it. Just running at these balls. So this is sort of like a knowledge. Now you're not going to break that knowledge in her. Now it's over. The ball has been revealed. She's had the joy of following, of running after it. There's no dissuading her from that. No, no way. There's something like that in us. Yeah. The head just keeps it unknown and just try to kill us with repetition. But in fact, uh, at any moment, that whole, all the momentum of all the repetition of all the 
crying wolf and all that and all this, it's still untouched, still vibrating, yes? And now you've heard that note in enough different songs. So now the, so the difference of the songs is getting overrided by the sameness of some of the notes, yeah? And so that's what traveling lighter is in a way. You, you're connected to some baseline and it and uh, yeah, there's tr trebles go this and peak and go that, but there's never a moving away off the baseline because it's it's the thing, it's the underlying beat between all the other beats. And after sensing it, I've never thought there's more. You know, a lot of other things I was introduced to very quickly. You look for more or a bigger aspect of it, or a greater aspect. This just stopped it all in the tracks, yeah? It's actually the last answer in this case, yeah? yeah. You know, I found my ball, so to speak, yeah? Yeah, treats and, and everything not. else. everything else is contained in that, you know, it's all... That's it underlies right. everything else. It, it's there no matter what else happens. It's, you know. That's right. So yeah. single-mindedness is not getting the mental state uh, mindful. It isn't. Single-mindedness is that. There's a recognition. Yeah, something has been revealed that gives a new meaning to all the other stuff that constantly gets revealed. And one of the meanings he gets is everything that has been revealed is coming and going. And that revelation of that doesn't come and go. Yeah. So you're at the end of the block. Yeah. It's awesome. I feel. I mean, I, I've, as a story, since I was young, I've been trying to get out of here, you know, truly. And no matter what it was, it was just another form of trying to get out of here. Yeah, spirituality, drug addiction, whatever, travel, everything. Yeah, nothing right or wrong with it, but there was an urge. And that urge uh, took a lot of forms, but that urge, uh, mm, to the point where you didn't know you could stop, yeah? You had an idea of stillness, was which was just a sudden or a very temporal interruption of that constant angst, yeah? But to realize that that angst is appearing in a large space of stillness and having that knowledge revealed. Mm -mm. All the meaning that was given to those temporal uh events that would come and go uh, get overridden by the underlying meaning to this underlying condition yes yeah so finally you can live uh, not taking self so seriously yeah pretty sweet so and then come here and get jacked up about the idea maybe yeah Maybe you get a Zen bitch slap, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. There's a power in this holding this space that's bigger than all the seeming individual aspects of it. Yes. Always. Mm -hmm. You want to call it grace or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's an energy that it's not one plus eight plus nine is like 18. It's one plus eight and nine is 850. It leaps. Yeah. Yeah. So the association with truth, the company of truth has a power in and of itself. So thanks for holding the space, Mike. I'm really happy to, to have met you and, and following your yeah. chronicles. Is yeah. I, and I love this whole, that this whole the whole is greater than the sum of the parts right here you know this whole what we're doing here what's happening here and i yeah. and i i also have this feeling that you know there's this old saying that the uh a rising tide lifts all boats and that's how this feels to me i mean there are boats mm. some boats are on fire some boats are going the wrong way 
some feel like they're sinking some you know whatever they are but there's something else at work here no matter what we think we're doing no matter what i think i'm doing or what you know what what the selves the what the perceived individual selves think they're doing that tide is coming and it goes in and out and it does whatever it does and uh, no matter who no matter who we think we are we're mostly that tide yes i like that no yeah there can be a rising tide and then the appearance of of a high and low but always a recognition of the rising of something yes through the high and low yeah it's pretty good instead of thinking it only has it can only be rising if it's high and it's not when it's low an overriding of that duality and then see it's a rising tide that's lifting all of these boats yes yeah thanks man anyone else mike yep cassandra cassandra Yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Paul, and thank you. Um, and I'm surprisingly nervous to speak, but I have been wanting to share a couple of experiences just to put out on the table and maybe get some feedback. And I know that you like to to speak in terms of principles. And so I'm hoping maybe you would offer something from there. So about 12 years ago, I had an experience um, that was very frightening. Um, I was working a lot at the time and I decided to take a break. I lived in Western North Carolina in the mountains and I had some land nearby. So I just went outside. It was a beautiful day, um, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. I was just sitting on the ground for a while taking a break. And um, so I thought I would just lie down on the um, blanket that I took and I did and I fell asleep. And I, I'm not really sure how long I was asleep, but at some point I woke up and the only thing in my visual field was just a blank blue sky. And for some split second, there was an absolute panic. Like I had no orientation. Like I didn't have a sense of my body. Um, there was nothing to see. There were no ornaments in space, so to speak. And it, it was a panic, you know, until I realized, oh, well, I'm lying on the ground and I can't see trees or anything. It's just a blank space. So of course the head um, took that, you know, from some of the Buddhist teachings, and you know, I started beating myself up, thinking, well, you know, when I die, I'm going to have a really tough time in the bardo if I can't just fall asleep in a field and wake up and be a little bit disoriented and you know, panic. So that was about 12 years ago, and then two years ago, um, I was staying with my mom. She had some physical issues, so I thought I would stay at her house. And um, I woke up about one in the morning in terrible physical pain. And I knew something was really wrong because I, I don't really have a lot of physical issues. That's not really the thing that I have to deal with in this life. So I made my way uh, down the hallway to my mom's room, sort of holding on to the wall. And I just said she was sort of awake. I said, you know, something's really wrong. And, you know, I don't know what it is. So I could barely walk. Um, I couldn't hardly stand up. So I went, I was freezing, I was shivering. Um, and so what was really interesting was there was no fear and no panic whatsoever. I, I just clicked into some sort of, I don't know, routine or program. And, you know, I went through in my mind, well, you know, hypoglycemia, I, I asked my mom to bring some honey. I said, I need blankets. I need water. I started clapping my hands and trying to stamp my feet to sort of raise chi or, or, you know, get myself perked up. Um, using her blood pressure monitor, um, neither it nor myself could palpate a pulse. And when it finally did, my pulse was 36 beats per minute. It couldn't get a blood pressure. But the whole reason I'm relating this is because after that experience, there's been a sense of like no fear. I've never been near death in this particular life. I have a lot of friends who've actually been clinically dead and have gone through horrible things and they've been really changed by it. And many of them have all, I mean, they're not stupid, but they just don't have the same kind of fear that they had before. And so I'm kind of looking for a perspective. I mean, that first experience of an utter panic of having no orientation and nothing in space 
And then this experience where part of me thought, well, you know, if this keeps going this direction, you know, I could just die. And um, eventually it was figured out that it was a reaction to a medication I had been prescribed that just um, depressed my central nervous system. And, you know, I was kind of shutting things down. But interesting, I, I bring this up because when you told this story of hitting your head and like when you kind of came back to the action figure, you know, like I don't have money to go in the ambulance. <laughs> I knew I was pretty well when my mom wanted to call the EMS and I'm like, no, I don't have insurance, you know, <laughs> I have to take care of this here. But I've just been pondering those experiences in light of the I am and, and what the I am is prior to all of the dramas that take place on the stage or whatever. And I guess I just wanted to bring it to the table to this community because I felt like there would be some understanding and, and maybe not really an explanation, but some sort of orientation from that. So um, that's what I wanted to share. Thanks. Well, thank you for uh, feeling safe enough to do that. Now, You know, there's free samples. That's how I would see it. And then there was a very quick reaction by the system that looked like panic, right? The right. first time when you lay right. there. Because usually, if you feel like you're unmoored, it that scares the that scares the shit out of of the anchor, yeah, which wants to keep you moored in this idea of self. Yes. Right. Well, that the other thing I would share is since I was a very young child, and as far as I know, I don't have any experience in this life of near drowning, but I, I've taken swimming lessons. I forced myself to take swimming lessons in college for a grade so that I would force myself to do it. But I cannot, unless forced, tolerate to be in water where I can't touch my feet <laughs> to oh, the good. bottom. So you know, that's, like, uh, same the sense. Programming. That's what the programming has like, uh, yeah, there's glitches and there's some of the primary programming gets rubbed. It got rubbed and then the sixth alarm fear fire, you know, the sixth uh, ring alarm went off. Yes, I would say. I had it with Kundalini. Yeah, so... Uh, I had uh, events with energy that made the action figure quite uncomfortable, but it wasn't a sudden thing. It lasted for a long time and it was sort of a, a drag to the point that I used to uh, put cash in an envelope and have it like sticking out of the envelope on the nightstand so that my roommates could have enough money to get rid of the body because I thought I was going to die every mm. night, so to speak. Uh, but the initial aspect was just like that, uh, a, a, like a, a, a lightning bolt of mortality. And then uh, because the head's always setting off alarms all the time, but when the head gets alarmed, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? The head likes to set off alarms and make up all these stories. But when the head itself gets alarmed, it really shows itself. Usually what happens in the experiences I had, it has that the captain's hat. It throws that off and it jumps overboard. And then <laughs> it's, all, it's just quiet because it's got overwhelmed with its job and it just it just walks off <laughs> that happened when i got run over it happened a couple of times in this life it happened with the uh covid <laughs> it just sort of said i'm out of here <laughs> and i didn't hear from it for a, for a few minutes it was crazy it just once it realized what it thought it had amply controlled was getting uncontrollable it jumps off and then the second one uh what was the second one again? I forgot. I'm just like having, oh, because having the, the you body. Had a familiarity. See, this is beautiful. This happened with me with the COVID. Yeah. 
I started feeling something that was triggering the action, you know, the alarms and the action figure. But then there was a familiarity with what I was feeling. Like I, I had had it before and I had survived. Mm -hmm. So a certain kind of peace came over me. But then it advanced to a place I hadn't been to. And that's when it jumped ship. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. jumped ship. So basically, I think the sheep herder, if the sheep get enough ideas in their heads, it's going to give up the sheep herding. It's just going to give up the position. Yeah. Well, because it's I thought, just the sheep itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, I really have felt that both of those experiences were really valuable. Um, the the second one, I've just really, I did not have any fear. I there was no, I was just kind of doing what I was presented, you know, what my training or you know whatever medical stuff I know told me to do, and the person who um, referred me to you and to these meetings. He mentioned to me before I came to the meetings that you had um, met Balsakar. And so the action figure, Cassandra likes books. And so I got a book, Consciousness Speaks. And there's a distinction that he makes in the book between the working and the thinking mind. Somebody had asked a question and, and the questioner said, well, you know, like if there was a situation and there was some danger, wouldn't you feel danger? And Balsakar says, certainly the working mind would sense the danger. The mind would not project a danger. It would be dangerous not to be prepared. But he says the working mind plans and prepares, but the thinking mind brings about the fear. Yes, or the anxiety, really. Yeah. Right, as you say, anxiety, right. Yeah. It's given it too much credit, fear is. But uh, yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Well, Ramesh was trying, I felt, to make it very, very easy to sort of get something. He didn't, and who wants to define that something? But just as a getting of something, and he would use these ways of, you know, the working mind and then the psychological mind and uh, and all this stuff, which I found helpful. I read his book, Who Cares? And uh, that was one of the first ones I read that had a big effect on me. I didn't read that many more, but I read that one and it motivated me to go see him because he was old at the time, 85. But I did know, notice that he would, uh, and his main thing was to see that there is no personal doer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the, he was, adamant about banging that door which was uh cool yeah yeah so yeah i mean, yeah, there are, i think see what you are and whatever is going on you and i give everything all the meaning it has yeah yeah so uh what's who says one event has value and another event doesn't because both events have been given the value, yeah? Because they are empty of meaning. So we, while living, are giving everything all the meaning it has from lesson two in the Course of Miracles, yes? Right. So what you're writing is the meaning something has given to these events, and that writing is leading to a, a, a happier dream, and there you go as you dream yourself out of it. Yeah, that's what it feels like dreaming myself out of it because it, it really did sort of dissolve a lot of fear. Because I mean, yeah. I know at, at some point the action figure will move, you know, pass on, well, I will die. I mean, just plainly, I will die one day, it will come. Oh, it will die, you're not gonna die. Yeah, it will die. Yeah, there you so. go. Well, thank you, thank you for, um, for giving me the space to talk about those things. Anytime, honey. Yeah, you're a, remember, you're a lifetime member of Zen Bitch Slap. That allows you 48 times to ask or share at a Zoom meeting. So <laughs> 48 times, wow. <laughs> 47 more times, yeah. All right, yeah. well, I'll make some marks on my calendar so I can keep track. <laughs> All right, yeah. And, you know, at certain points, I'm willing to be paid for more opportunities so uh, okay so there's another level 
<laughs> yeah, 48 or 49 times, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. Thanks for the space, yep. Everyone else, anyone else? See Zoe Banks, there she is. Nice to see Zoe. School has started. It is. That was wild. I want to say, just so grateful. I love that. I love that for of the dog and just listen to this message and it's so beautiful. I don't even hear Your voice is going out, honey. It sounds awesome. It sounds, it sounds like your voice is going down a, a stair with like a, with a ball. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Everyone hear it that way? Is everyone hearing oh, it? That's good enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that sounds. Sometimes Zooms has a mind of its own. I appreciate it. Remember, we had the lady that was speaking from up the ass herself. That was pretty good. Yeah. She's a very, very stoic explorer. She was up the ass herself and she she was talking to us through the Zoom. It was amazing. This was awesome. You went down a like a musical scale. Like you fell down a musical scale, like a staircase. <laughs> but I got the message anyway, Zoe. Yeah, very nice. Uh all right, hold on. We got Simon. Simon's here. Nice to see Simon. Can't hear you. We got no no, can't hear. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Yes. Yeah. I want to say something more as a sharing and question together. So um, when I first heard this message, the way you express it, I think was three weeks ago, it was a very exciting moment because I said, wow, I'm getting it, you know? It's like I've heard this before in different forms and for some reason, I said, wow, I see what it means. Like for the first time, something is clicking, okay? And of course, I, I understand that it's not about a body-mind understanding it and wanting to own some special knowledge. But at the same time, as this started, started to click, I felt it was spontaneously arising from, from within. Here I live in a community, I have some friends, they have some interest. We sit and talk, and as I sit and talk, I realize somewhere here is clear, okay? So, and it's not about Simon, if I relate to Simon, my own understanding story. It's not about Simon, it's about itself knowing itself and being able to speak for itself. And of course, yes, there is a level of, I'm, I'm happy about it. I mean, I've been a seeker for 30 years and I've been a practitioner in different ways for many years until I came to understand that it's not about me and it's not about my practicing and improving and getting there. So mm -hmm. these are uh, understanding I have it precious. So I'm not trying anything, okay? As I said, at the same time, as I see that this becomes clear here, there is a sense of, wow, <laughs> opening into something, okay? Now, and some questions do arise and some things I see, which are, of course, some are personal to how I receive it, and some maybe are more general. I will try to say what I mean. Uh, what is more personal is I see there is here an attachment to existence and to the body, and there is a reacting, uh, wanting to own something, and I understand I cannot own anything, but I wish I could. <laughs> And the other thing is this question about being an energy, you know, you were referring to your own experiences of Kundalini. And for me, because that's where I started, I started on a path related to Kundalini 30 years ago. 
And I all the time experience movements of Kundalini in my body, all the time. <laughs> so um, what do I do about this? I don't know. If anyone asked me, I would say I would not encourage anyone to try and get there through energies. <clears throat> I've had my own experiences about this, and I would say that's not... Um, Although I see there are some teachers that still put you on this way, and my first path was in this direction. I just moved out of it because I felt I was again and again getting into energy states, okay? But yeah, I mean, uh, if I if I look at it in this perspective, I can see I can only try and... Um, look until the looker is at the end of himself. I'm not at the end of myself. I'm not at the end of Simon. Um, I try not to connect too much with things, but uh, yeah, I put it there, I stop here. <laughs> I wanna hear what comes to you to say about this. Uh, well, Simon, when you were first saying stuff, what we would do with that would be seeing it as not you. So what's being described through Simon, about Simon, isn't Simon. Yeah. So that first part mm -hmm. when we're talking about, you know, this getting clear or whatever, that's not, we have nothing to do with that. Now, the second part was the energy thing. Yeah. Uh, we were using the energy just to, to, uh, inferring back to what Cassandra was saying about the panic she felt that first time in her, you know, when she opened her eyes and had no uh, mooring and just was looking at empty space. So I'm not a promoter of energy or a demoter of it. But when we're very clear and we can describe, let's say, what's going on, what we're describing is not us. Yeah. This is the whole point. Yeah. So there can be an incredible insight in, into Simon and we're not that Simon. Yeah. That's the beauty. Yeah. That's the beauty because there's a, there's relief and there's relief from the, that drive to get relief. Yeah. They feel differently. So, a lot of times we're hoping an understanding is going to bring us relief and there's a drive uh, to get that relief. And then there's a relief from that. That's what we're speaking about here, really. So when I was speaking with someone the other day and they had an incredibly clear description, but how it was being filed under, it was being filed under them, yes? And we're just trying to change that filing program. And then that clear description is not of you. Yeah. Yes. This is the message that we, we're promoting here is not only the clarity about the first idea of Simon, but the one that's claiming to, to have that clarity is also an aspect of Simon. Yeah. And I'm neither one nor the other. And this is what brings relief, not to Simon. Though Simon will have relief, but it doesn't bring the relief to Simon. It's relief from Simon. Yeah. And it has a different flavor. And once you get tasting this flavor, you'll see in a weird way, the mayonnaise of the prior relief had gone sour. Yeah. There was a sour tinge in it. This one is fresh. Yeah, 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 that's all. So I think I try to target the first aspect of what you said. And then the second aspect, a nice warning. Yes, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't ask for anything now, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you may not be happy what shows up. So, yeah. 
Yeah. So I hope I ca captured. I hope I captured what you were asking. Did I? Yeah. Close. Uh, actually, yeah. I mean, um, I think I honestly. Oh, you're uh, going through Zoe again. It, Does that mean? Inside, I yeah. Exactly. Point. I do feel free from Simon. Yes. Good. Still, when Simon comes up with some request, I still think he has some reason to ask, quest to ask questions. So, uh, yeah, that's going to um, be you're going to you're going to see that, and uh, you're going to see a new facet in that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Let's say I feel partially relieved from Simon, but because I'm not completely relieved from from Simon, then I feel like I come in again and again, like. Yes, yeah, I'm mean, pretty you're... addicted. I was listening to satsang. As I woke up, I was listening to satsang. Then it's seven thirty. I'm listening to satsang. Yeah. See, this is your. I'm positively addicted. Yeah. Th yeah. That head. That head. Uh... The head has found a home in spirituality. Yeah. So yeah. it grows itself in there. Yeah. And it's sure. grown a, a certain, uh, let's say, species of Simon in there that I've yeah. seen in other people. Yeah. And yeah. more's going to be revealed about that. And you're going to lose interest in wanting to lose interest in that Simon. Yeah. It's just going to, that's what's going to happen. Really. Yeah. See, Every time there's a wish for something to be de deflated, there's another balloon being. <laughs> you're going to get to a point mm -hmm. where you're going to see that little thing behind the scene and you're not going to blow into that. Yeah. And that's truly the relief I'm speaking of now. Yeah. So there's relief and then there's going to be relief. Yeah. Yeah. There, I'm telling yeah. you, it's like almost. It's almost like grades of manuka honey, you know? So there's a honey called manuka. It comes from the manuka tree, but there's grades to the quality of it to the such a point where they have governing bodies that will ver verify and vouch for the quality of it. So that, and they have a way of doing it called UMF and it's, if it's UMF 20, it's damn good Manuka honey. Yeah. So, so there's relief and then there's relief. So there's Manuka honey and then there's Manuka honey. Yeah. So, so, so most people start with the, the first level of Manuka honey and then they start arriving at the 30 UMF Manuka honey, which is for all intents and purposes is, is very just very thinly connected with the other manuka honey in the level of honey that's about it it's a completely different taste and everything so what we're saying here humbly i'm just reporting into reverse engineering so when relief starts happening and let's say a relief stabilizes and becomes a now another kind of foundation it goes through a phase of reverse engineering. So you see the one of Paul, but you weren't seeing the other aspect of Paul. So what you thought would be enough relief for Paul to do quite well with would run out quickly because of the voraciousness of the other Paul, yeah? Gobbling up everything. So, you know, Three week retreat, maybe have an effect for a little while, and then six week retreat, on and on and on. So the the secondary Paul got bigger, and bigger as the the first Paul was dying, but they're the same fucking activity. So this is a relief from that. And so if someone's been engaged in spirituality, the fungus or the the mold has grown. <laughs> it has. <laughs> It's just, uh, it has. And so uh, we're bringing in the big exterminator. <laughs> yeah. We got to, we got to like spray the whole house, so to speak. 
So science, so Paul, Paul, Paul. So wherever <laughs> I am, based on I am, and then in, in those changing winds of the dreaming, yeah, you're guaranteed that the head is going to make it mechanically say it's Paul. Yeah. Now you have mm. that understanding. So your condition isn't causing it to do that or not do that. It's mechanical. So it, if it's mm. doing it, it doesn't mean your condition is bad. It just means it's mechanical. So this is what yeah. happens. So we're going to look at, and you and I and everyone <laughs> here, knowing it or not, it doesn't look like we're, the camera's being moved, but our tripod's on wheels and something's moving the tripod back farther. So you're seeing more. <laughs> there's not more Simon. There's not more Paul. They're seeing more of simoning and pauling yeah so you didn't you know it doesn't feel like the camera got picked up because you're on wheels and your the tripod is being moved and there's just more gets revealed yeah and then there'll be a bingo where uh the investigation gets called off and you know your maintenance is like once every 10 years not like one every day and you're just you're riding like a perpetual wave. Yeah. 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 It almost, you know, like when you got used to riding a bike, you could lift your hands off the handles and you'd be riding without holding the handles. Yes. Yeah. You didn't have to have that assurance of going. Yeah. It's going to, it feels sort of like that. Yeah. There's relief. You've got nothing to do with it. And then, and uh, and uh, that's that's why it's readily available. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the so much. Mm. yeah. yeah. Cool. I try to do the best I can. <laughs> Sharing about it, I don't, you know. Uh, but it's mostly reverse engineering. That's what happened. Yeah. The primary point was relief. Knowing why it's available or ain't available is secondary. If you don't have the relief, all well, that just doesn't mean shit. But relief is, yeah. I hope this is the currency we're trading in here is relief. Yeah. 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 And however that's going to spell out for you or how what type of song you're going to write about it how what it's going to motivate is is beautifully uniquely appearing where you seem to be yeah the roots all the same but well, who wants to see the same flower so everyone has a different flowering of it yeah the same root knowing i am knowing intellectual all this shit knowing I am, I am knowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyone else? I th Did we lose Mike? I don't know. My, the MC, it's Johnny Carson left. What's, I'm just Ed McMahon. I'm left with the whole show. Well, next week we're going to have George Carlin back. Yeah. All right. I'll say, I'm going to say, start saying goodbye. <laughs> Someone transcended while we were speaking. They're gone. No Michael in sight. All right. Sit, Craig May, thank you. Thank you for uh, a, peep, a peek into the Craig corner. Yes. Very nice. Sherry, nice to see you. It was nice seeing you guys down in San Diego. Beautiful sunset. There's Mia. Mia's doing well. Philip in Brisbane. Susan Harris. She's not far from here. I know that. Zoe Banks. Zoe. 
I don't think you'll ever have that sound effect on your voice. I hope ever again. It was very cool, though. I'm glad it's on tape. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ch check it out. It was like falling I down <laughs> like a musical scale. It was awesome. <laughs> it was all I got is the ball and the dog. That's all I got from it. So, all right. We got Sama, oh. nice to see you again. Oh, I just wanted to say I'm on Cape Cod, which is why I'm not coming on Saturdays. What happened? I said I'm in Cape Cod. Oh, you're in Cape Cod now. Wow. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a beautiful place, yeah. especially in September. Yeah. yeah. I uh I had the privilege of being there numbers of times. No, I know. Yeah, I've done talks on Buzzard Bay and also on the Atlantic side. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Very nice. That's a, one of the most beautiful spots, except when it's the summer, July and August. Busy. When the people leave, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's nice to see you, Susan. Cassandra, thank you for stepping in and sharing. And yeah. Thank you. Anand, nice to see Anand. Angie, Fletch, Esther, Esther. Zen Bitch Slap is going to appear as a forever hug to the action figure called Esther. Yes. It's been proclaimed, and so it is. <laughs> Uh, let me see. I think I have got everybody. I don't know. They all left now, which is good. But uh, no, that's just the only left page. Oh. Hey, thanks everyone. Lindy. Oh, Lindy. I saw the sky in the clouds. Mia, Mike, everyone. Thank you so much. Holding the space. We'll be around, uh, tomorrow recovery, 10 30. And then Saturday at the church in Marin. And, uh, yeah. See you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Paul, good beautiful. Night. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Mm. You could, uh, yeah. There we are. yeah, we're trying to get out.